and let us all that we can to build a better future. So Anthony Blinken um, was having a little fun get together with the Senate budget hearing. However, 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 uh, pro-Palestinian pro uh, protesters decided to interrupt this event. Now, the thing is, they put him in an awkward spot, which is absolutely hilarious. But on the other hand, too, uh, you see a, a familiar face, uh, Medea Benjamin. And I just have to say, you know, when we see activists like Jose Vega or anyone else who call these politicians, they're immediately thrown out or recognized right away. You would think somebody like Medea Benjamin would be recognized by anyone in Washington, D.C. at this point. Just, uh, just, just, just some questions I got to ask here and there. But nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, attention is being brought up due to the fact that there was also a horrific bombing that took place in a refugee camp. But we will be covering that in another story segment. So to be fair, let's pull up this video here. Shout out to Compton J who has been doing phenomenal work with Revolutionary Blackout Network. Thank you so much for actually getting this video up and ready. So let's play it for all the beautiful people and see it firsthand. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Murray, uh, Vice Chair Collins, uh, distinguished members of the Appropriations Committee. Thank you for this opportunity to testify before you today. Stop supporting the genocide and African of our people of Gaza. Please fire now. Save the children of Gaza. Not shrinking back. Not in the face of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Not in the face of an intensifying strategic competition in the Indo-Pacific and around the world. If the witness will suspend, and I ask that everyone again respect this hearing, we will suspend until the room is clear. As in so much that we do to advance America's national security. Notice that it's all about money and power and investment, but I just want to pull up this tweet right here. Shout out to Brianna Joy Gray for also uh, retweeting and giving commentary on this, because apparently, as it stands right now, as it stands right now, um, here's what Secretary Anthony Blinken shared out. We don't have to choose between defending Israel and aiding Palestinian civilians. We can and must do mo both. Isn't that fantastic? Now, of course, uh, we do have this. Any member of Congress who cares about Israel's enduring security or America's for that matter should support defense and humanitarian assistance to address this conflict. Guess who writes the article? Guess who writes the article? Defending Israel is essential. So is aiding civilians in Gaza. What you could call for a ceasefire. I mean, that is, that is something he could do, theoretically. In theory, that is something he could do. Because, again, if we just get Brianna Joy Gray's statement right here. It is our duty as Americans to give aid to the children after they've bombed, after they are bombed with our financial and political support. Is quite a take. Now, it's not from the article, but it's just, uh, <clears throat> it is, uh, just, 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 just something to, 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 to see firsthand. It's, it's something there. Well, a nice, a nice, a nice, a nice little quote. Take, nice little quote. Take. Let's return back to the video. Our defense, our di the diplomacy, our development must work hand in hand. Committee will suspend. And again, I, I appreciate that people feel passionately about these issues. I would ask that you respect our witnesses and our committee members and allow the American people to hear their testimony. We will pause until the room is clear. I know that several. Committee will suspend and I again ask that those in the audience respect the people in the room and allow us to continue the hearing. So the hearing will suspend until the uh, disruption is removed. President and I have both stressed the need for Israel to operate by the rule. Why are we here talking about the Committee will suspend. Let them be at the table. Why aren't they at the table? Cease fire now. I said you. Cease fire now.
So what can we take away from this? Well, <clears throat> the Democrats are going to be in a little bit of a quandary, especially during the 2024 election cycle. They've already burnt bridges amongst the African-American community, but now the Arab and Muslim community and Latino community. And the thing is, as we look at the fact that the Democrats are struggling right now to keep on that mask of neoliberalism, the evidence is abundantly clear. Good luck, whatever kind of message of peace and love that the Democrat or at least to the Democrats, the Democratic establishment. Good luck with the message of peace and love that you're so used to sharing with the people, because we're witnessing an absolute destruction of Gaza. Now, this horrific conflict that's happening there uh, between Israel and Palestine, you, you, you can't look me in the eye and tell me that even if there is a ceasefire, that years down the road, that there will not be another conflict. With the amount of destruction and horror that is taking place, so many lives have been forever been scarred that war will be eternal in that region. I want to pull up commentary here from Kim Iverson, who's done a phenomenal work, especially covering this bloody and horrific war between Israel and Palestine. Let's play this video. And if you're not following her on social media, please do so. Let me just show you this video. I watched the entire Blinken and Lloyd Austin as the, the testimony in front of the Appropriations Committee. This is one of the things that happened. This actually happened throughout their, their testimony. This same sort of thing kept happening over and over and over again. But look at this. This is Medea Benjamin with Code Pink rising up, confronting him during his Appropriations Committee hearing and yelling at the back of the room that we want a ceasefire. Watch this. Not shrinking back. Not in the face of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Not in the face of an intensifying strategic competition in the Indo-Pacific and around the world. If the witness will suspend, and I ask the everyone again respect this hearing, we will suspend until the room is clear. <laughs> uh, good for her that ended up happening several times not with her just her but others you could see all those people raising their hands they have the, the representing the blood on the hands the red hands um, many more people continue to do this throughout his testimony at the end of the testimony it kind of required anthony blinken to address this because it had happened over and over throughout his hearing and so he said you know i i've heard you we are trying to limit and mitigate civilian casualties that is on all of our minds we're really truly trying to do this while at the same time trying to reach our goals essentially which is what exactly and that is the big question what are the goals well the goals are abundantly clear especially when we look at um overall what the president and his administration are trying to do is to try and maintain whatever kind of grasp of power, perception of power uh, of the Biden-Harris administration. Biden and Harris uh, both have shown to be effectively weak and incompetent. And now as this war intensifies, it's, very, it's, it's out there for everyone to see that this administration is still trying to show its support and they're trying to defend everything at once i want to pull up this article here from the bbc because a very interesting commentary took place especially in the white house with the press secretary but i want to read this article here the white house and senior officials have reaffirmed u.s support for israel numerous times since hamas 7th october attack we stand as israel and we will make sure israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens defend itself and respond to this attack Mr. Biden said it in its immediate aftermath. In recent weeks, the president's tone has changed slightly. He has maintained his support for Israel, but also cautioned its leaders to follow international law. That ain't happening. Especially, especially 
when we witnessed firsthand the Gaza refugee camp that was devastated by Israel. Don't worry, we're going to see CNN's Wolf Blitzer in a very awkward position. The most awkward two minutes and 15 seconds in Wolf Blitzer's professional career. But we'll be going back to that later. <clears throat> he has then, once again, uh, he has maintained his support, but also cautioned its leaders to follow international law. Good luck. And responded and responded responded. Re responsibly to the unfolding humanitarian crisis in Gaza affecting Palestinian civilians. Whoever wrote this article, quit drinking whiskey. Israel says Hamas incursion and ongoing rocket attacks since the 7th of October have killed 1,400 people. At least 239 people were also taken hostage by Hamas. Israel has been bombing Gaza since the attack. The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza says more than 8,500 people have been killed since Israel's bombardment began. Goodness gracious. But here, let's go ahead and pull up the White House press secretary. Now, shout out again to Brianna Joy Gray. No one's making her do this job. Let's see what they got to say, especially in regards to the fact on how they're dealing with the protesters and how they view them. Doesn't Biden think the anti-Israel protesters in this country are extremists? What I can say is what we've been very clear about this. When it comes to anti-Semitism, there is no place. We have to make sure that we speak against it very loud uh, and, be, uh, and be very clear about that. Remember, what the president decided to, when the president decided to run for president is what he saw in Charlottesville in 2017. When we, he saw uh, neo-Nazis marching down the streets of Charlottesville uh, with vile anti-Semitic uh, now, now, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, <clears throat> because we're going to rewind that. I think there's a big difference between those protesters that are right now calling for a ceasefire and those people in Charlottesville. I, I mean, I don't know. Charlottesville more charged racially with, again, uh, a lot of hate and vitriol. These protesters are calling for a ceasefire. There's absolute destruction that's happening to the civilian populace in Gaza. Night and day. Let's let's just rewind that just so you could hear the question again one more time. Doesn't Biden think the anti-Israel protesters in this country are extremists? What I can say is what we've been very clear about this. When it comes to anti-Semitism, there is no place. We have to make sure that we speak against it very loud. Uh, and be uh, and be very clear about that. Remember what the president decided to, when the president decided to run for president is what he saw in Charlottesville in 2017 when we he saw uh, neo Nazis marching down the streets of Charlottesville uh, with vile anti Semitic uh, just hatred. And he was very clear then, and he's very clear now. Uh, he's taken an actions against this over the past two years. This is how we know our president's senile. This is how we know that he doesn't know his wazoo from a hole in the ground. Our president is confusing the Charlottesville people with the ceasefire protesters that are currently calling for a ceasefire. I don't know, diplomatic action to take place, diplomacy. I know, controversial statement. Maybe that's the bridge too far. And he's continued to be clear. There is no place, no place for this type of vile and despite, despite this, this kind of rhetoric. And we hear you guys, though, talk about extremists all the time. It is usually about MAGA extremists. So what about these protesters who are making Jewish I've students feel very, unsafe very on college campuses? Are they extremists? I've been very, very clear. We are calling out any form of hate. So calling for a ceasefire is now a form of hate. Remember how a lot of the vote blue, no matter who, sycophants were screaming from the rooftop how much better Biden is in regards to diplomacy, how better he is at listening to the people who are protesting. Remember all, all of that propaganda from all the blue check marks on Twitter? Re remember those individuals? Hey, what do you have to say now? Especially with the bloodshed that is happening, unopposed. Just a quick reminder. Gaza refugee camp devastated. And, and this all took place yesterday. 
The imagery is shocking and horrific. Let's just rewind that again, real quick from this video. We hear you guys don't talk about extremists all the time. It is usually about MAGA extremists. So what about these protesters who are making Jewish I've students feel very, unsafe very on college campuses? Are they extremists? I've been very, very clear. We are calling out any form of hate, any form of hate. It is not acceptable. It should not be acceptable here. And we are going to continue to call that out. And let and let me be very clear. This is a president that has continued to have that fight in his office, in this administration. You know, when he repealed Trump's Muslim ban on his very in first, first day in office, that is something that this president did. Uh, he also established an inter-policy committee to counter Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, anti and related forms of bias and discrimination. We have taken this very, very, very seriously from the president all the way on down. No, they haven't. No one is doing their job correctly. No one, no one, no one in Washington, D.C., especially the Biden-Harris administration, are able to give a real coherent answer or use it at show real effective leadership. All what they are doing right now is giving out words. And now, if you're a protester, congratulations. You're on par with being anti-Semitic, apparently. If you're calling for a ceasefire, you're a horrible human being. How dare you call for human lives to be spared as mass destruction is being rained down on Gaza? There must be peace. There must be diplomacy. But how can there be peace when there's so much unchecked bloodshed and destruction? And so all these activists and organizers that voted for Biden in 2020, this is something you have to live with. Now, I know for a fact that if this was Trump, and if he was president, so many people would be out there in the streets right now. But I guess so many of the vote blue, no matter who people are just fat with brunch, just so happy and relaxed. They're just living their best lives. Well, by ignoring the hypocrisy of the Democrats by the Biden-Harris administration, this is what you get. Now, I don't know how 2024 is going to play out, but Democrats, good luck with your coalition. Good luck in trying to get people to vote Democrat. Good luck getting people to vote in general. This election cycle is, it won't be the most important. I think it'll be the most hilarious and most interesting. But it will not be the most important election cycle of our lifetime. But one thing is abundantly clear. Stop. Stop wasting your time in believing that these politicians give a damn. They don't. They are professional liars.